Um, I think in the bubble, you know, we had to go to the games and you had to socially distance and there's no fans. So, you know, unlike the players who are interacting as a general manager, you're sitting off to the side and you're not really allowed to talk and interact with other people. You're wearing a mask. So a lot of people said, gosh, what were you doing? You know, going crazy, biting your nails. But I did spend a lot of time just praying. I mean, it just, it was a way to really stay connected and stay hopeful with, with the games. I'm excited to have a conversation with Rob Palinka today. Rob and his family, Kristen, and his two kids are plugged into the Mariners community. And you also know Rob from being the general manager of the Lakers and congratulations on championship. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, man. I have four questions, but the first one is a little, just a little bit of a multiple choice fun question. I, I sent you the, uh, the tweet six weeks before. So there's eight teams left. Like this is pre-NBA finals and I, I just, I just, I just called it. I said, Miami Heat, Lakers, Lakers win in six. Six weeks later, it comes to fruition. Was that A, when you saw that, when I sent it to you, were you like, huh, this is interesting. B, wow, that's incredible insight. Or C, I want to hire Eric to be a scout for the Lakers. I think it was C. We had an <laughs> analytics department at the Lakers that uses numbers to predict models. And yeah. If you're ever called out of the pastorship, you yeah. know, we, we may have a seat for you. It's you always good to have a backup plan, <laughs> fallback plan. <laughs> um, and now I wanna, I wanna ask just some, some more serious questions. And I, I know that 2020 for you, just like it has been for many of us, has been filled with uh, just a complete mix of emotions. And, I, and as I was praying for you in the bubble, I thought, man, this is, you've been through a, a wild run of emotions from being at the, winning a, an NBA title to also the, the lowest low of losing a, a dear friend of over multiple decades in Kobe Bryant. And I'm curious, what lessons did you learn from Kobe, from your friendship, all the times you saw him lead and play that then helped you as a leader this year? Um, I don't think there's a part of my life that's not shaped by my 20 year friendship with him. And I, I've, I've told the story at his memorial uh, about the day that he and Gigi went to heaven. I was actually at Mariners and I was in a service and don't ordinarily um, check my cell phone, but I did. And I was getting some texts from Kobe that morning and he was trying to um, help a young girl that was part of uh, the basketball team that Gigi was on get a sports internship. Yeah. Um, and that was minutes really before they left us. Um, and I just think that's who he is. He was always trying to serve and help other people. I think we all knew him as the black mamba and the killer on the court, but off the court, he was just always trying to make people's lives better. But I don't think I'll ever forget that morning being here, you were, um, given a sermon about taking a, a burden or a stone and throwing it into the yeah. lake, the yeah. Mariner's Lake. And um, that was literally when I got the phone call. So uh, that's become kind of a holy place for me to go back to wow. um, just because of that moment. But um, to have a best friend like that, he was he was in some sense a, like a real life superhero to me, just someone who was there to help me through whatever challenge might come my way. and still have a great relationship with Vanessa and his daughters, um, his three daughters. And uh, he's he's a source of inspiration. He and Gigi to me every day of my life. Yeah. And that's, I remember that day. And it was, it was a huge impact for our whole community, just because for people close by, even if they never um, had many conversations with him, he was, you would hear so many stories if he was kind to people at Starbucks and just was well respected and liked in the, in the community. Yeah, I mean, he, he was a man of faith um, and we had many conversations about faith and the role it played in our life. And I remember uh, towards the end of his career, I was having a conversation with him about, hey, you know, you played 20 years and if you look back, is there anything you would maybe approach a little differently? And his answer kind of caught me off guard. He, he said, I would, um, I would probably lead a little bit more with empathy. Really? And really trying to understand um, the the views of people other than my own view because i think when you're young in life yeah. you know it's easy to get caught up in i i know everything and people yeah. should do it my way i'm having success um but i think that was just a big quality of his as he matured in his career was he became very empathetic and 
I know the role that his faith played in his life probably led to that in some sense. Yeah, that's great. So in your sport, anytime someone is a Christian, you know, you played, you played uh, basketball in college at University of Michigan. I know you were uh, recruited really well out of high school. And so when someone claims to be a Christian in hoops or any kind of sport, NFL, there's a ton of attention sometimes that is on that person. How do you stay grounded as I'm, I'm Rob who follows Jesus? I, mean, I think as a believer, um, it's, it's my view that we can live in complete surrender. And I, I, I try to every day approach the day as being an instrument in God's hands. And I think it's, Lord, how are you going to use me in this sphere you brought me into today? It happens to be professional sports, yeah. but how can I love? How can I serve? How can I work hard? How can I pursue excellence for your name's sake? And then it's easy to kind of let the results be in his hands. Yeah. Um, there was a time in the bubble, I remember actually in the Heat series, uh, which was a battle and they beat us in game five. So uh, the series went three Lakers, two Heat. And I went back to my hotel room that night and I was like, God, how can you let this happen? How could they, you know, how could they beat us? This just doesn't make sense to me. I wonder if we're going to win the series now. And I caught myself that night. I remember praying deep into the night, like, don't put your will at the center of how this series wow. should turn out. Put God's will at the center of this. He knows what's best. Yeah. Like he's in charge of this and, and your life. And I think when we surrender um, that way, it leads to freedom and it leads to the confidence of a believer. So that was a, a big mind shift for me. And, and then ultimately, yeah. you know, we ended up winning. Man, that is so true. I, even I know in my own life, there's so many times that I um, I try to hold on to control or find my worth in something yeah. other than Christ. And yeah. it never, it never is the right path. It, it always ends badly for me. I'm not quenched and satisfied. That's it. Yeah, I mean, you talked about Kobe. I remember at the beginning of my job, he gave me a great piece of advice. And, you know, sports uh, live in the public view. ESPN, the, all the papers are covering every move of the Lakers and other teams. and. He just said, hey, I, my piece of advice to you is don't get caught up in the praise when you're doing well, because then you'll get big headed and yeah. prideful. And don't get when the critics come out and they're criticizing, you're trying to tear you down. Don't get discouraged. You just got to find yourself in pursuing the work with integrity. I think that's there's some gospel message in that, yeah, right? Yeah. If our identity is in the Lord, then what people say really shouldn't lift us up. That's right. Or if they attack us, it shouldn't discourage us that's if, right. if we find our identity in God. So that's I think great. That was really lived no, out. That too. is a good word. Yeah. yeah. What are what are things that have been encouragements to you, or maybe spiritual practices or disciplines? How do you stay motivated to, to do what you're talking about, waking up each day and, and you, you viewing your life and your profession as a way to glorify Him? How do you keep on that path of walking in His ways? I think it's so important. I, I, you know, I, I really spent a lot of time reading Paul's letters in the bubble. And, and if you really unpack so much of what he talks about, it's it's your mindset and fixing your mind yes. on heavenly things. And fixing, Colossians 3, too. Yeah. yeah and, and I think that for me, that starts early in the morning. I every day just try to center myself in the word and, awesome. and trying to surrender my will for the day to God's will for the day. Um, and then throughout the day, uh, much like Paul admonishes us to practice, is stay rooted in, in, in the things of God and, and what he would have. So um, I think in the bubble, you know, we had to go to the games and you had to socially distance and there's no fans. So, you know, unlike the players who are interacting as a general manager, you're sitting off to the side and you're not really allowed to talk and interact with other people. You're wearing a mask. So a lot of people said, gosh, what were you doing? You know, going crazy, biting your nails. But I did spend a lot of time just praying. I mean, it just, it was a way to really stay connected and stay hopeful with, with the games. Yeah, man, I love that. When you look on the other side of this year, um, it's had joys, has had challenges. What are things that the Lord has done in you that you're like, man, God, where I was at the beginning of 20 and where I'll be at the end, here's here's ways the Lord has matured me, the ways he's, he's nudged me closer to him. What stands out? You know, I think the the, the first line of um, the 23rd 
uh, well, one of the lines of the 23rd Psalms about um, just that the Lord is our shepherd and that we shall not live in want. Yeah. I think that's been kind of a big thing in this COVID time of loss and going through, um, you know, losing a friend, losing a goddaughter is not putting my personal needs and wants first, because if you do that, you'll probably be disappointed. Life has a lot of hard parts to it. It really yeah. does. But um, knowing that our sustenance and knowing that our daily bread comes from God's love. And I think mm. when you frame yourself that way, you really can live a fulfilled life. And so I think that's something I've learned in this year of incredible disappointment is um, is being centered and on, on, on the bread of life and yeah. God's love. Man, that's so solid. I appreciate the time and, and it's super encouraging for me. Stay in the path, read the scripture every day, find my affirmation in him ultimately, not to get too high on praise or too low on criticism. Rob, thanks for the time, man. Yeah, we got the hoop over there. I know DK and Pastor Fields, I've heard they have good <laughs> three-point jumpers, so I can still shoot a little bit. Maybe there's a contest D down DK the road. DK talks um, way more smack than, than he should. All right, well, we'll play it out in the court and see what happens. <laughs>